2021 represents a pivotal year to invigorate interest, awareness and investment in large-scale food fortification and biofortification. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres will convene a food system summit as part of the decade of action to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. And today we're taking a deep dive focusing on the complementarity between large-scale food fortification and biofortification and the opportunities of ensuring the most vulnerable people are reached with nutrient-rich foods. What would you say the impact of COVID-19 has been on global malnutrition? The impacts of COVID, turning the clock back uh, 10 years. So 10 years of progress is being wiped out if we don't act. Before the pandemic, 2 billion people were suffering from malnutrition, not a small number. Now World Food Programme, for example, estimates that uh, people who are facing food security is going to double 2020. Lots of people have heard of fortification, but they probably haven't heard of industrial fortification or biofortification. So can you break those terms down, explain what the difference is between them and how they complement each other? Industrial fortification is uh, the addition of essential micronutrients to uh, foods uh, during processing. Uh, so this typically happens at factories, but can also happen at mills. We have examples such as uh, wheat flour fortification or maize fortification or iodized salt, which I think is one of our biggest public health achievements to date, or fortification of edible oils. And then biofortification is the increase of micronutrients or essential nutrients in plants through natural breeding. Both interventions have tremendous potential to expand their impact, but what needs to happen at globally and at country level in order to realise this potential? Well, uh, in order to realise the potential of these kinds of investments, there has to be uh, an awakening in, in governments as to the importance of micronutrient deficiencies. You know, micronutrient deficiencies are called hidden hunger for a reason, because their effects are hidden. We need to increase the access to affordable, nutritious foods. So staple crops like wheat, rice, millet, legumes that form a big part of the you know, dinner plate, we need to make them as nutritious as possible. Where do large scale food fortification and biofortification fit into the agenda of the Food Systems Summit? And what outcomes you would like to see out of the summits as far as scaling up is concerned? So for us, it's critical that these solutions, such as fortification and biofortification, but also other solutions that can help to eliminate micronutrient malnutrition, are being highlighted at both the Food Systems Summit and um, the Nutrition for Growth Summit that will be following uh, this year. We need to see bold commitments, bold aspirational commitments that are then progressively realised over the following three, four years. So we want governments to get behind this, to demand it, and what's really interesting about these two interventions is that they are essentially proven interventions. We don't have to do a lot of piloting of them. We don't have to wait for a whole range of other things to happen. We can scale these things fairly quickly. We can make a massive dent in that 2 billion micronutrient malnourished number by 2030. This is the largest opportunity because all these interventions are right there and ready to be scaled up what we need is strong and long-term commitments to make this happen.